happy hour on this Friday. And joining me tonight is RT producer Jenny Churchill and Evan McMorris Santoro, reporter and blogger for Talking Points Memo. Hi. Thanks for joining me, guys. Happy Friday. Um, you know, we've, we've spoken a few end of the world theories on the show before, especially when everyone thought that the rapture was coming. But the theories never died down, and especially because we haven't gotten to 2012 yet. And so now here's a new one that apparently people are just going crazy over online. Take a look. Okay, look at the Earth distance, 1.812. Elias right now getting nearer to us by 300,000 miles per day. In about a week, that number is going to be 400,000 miles per day, and it's going to continue to increase. You're going to see more and more volcanoes going off. That's your sign to wake people up. You have 33 volcanoes erupting right now in the Earth, and that number is going to continue to go up as we move along in the timeline. Vote on the news, and here's the winner. There's a huge hidden heavenly body right here in our solar system. Evidence is mounting that either a brown dwarf star or a gas giant planet is lurking at the outermost reaches of our solar system, far beyond the planet Pluto. According to the British newspaper, the independent, the object is four times the size of Jupiter. Experts say the presence of such a massive object could explain why a barrage of comets has been coming. It's been almost 10 years since little Pluto was demoted from being a planet, but today scientists from the California Institute of Technology have announced that they finally have solid evidence for a planet X, a true ninth planet on the edge of our solar system. It is believed to be far beyond the orbit of Pluto, roughly the size of Neptune, with a mass 10 times that of Earth. There are things out there, little icy objects that are uh, orbiting in a funny way, and nobody was quite sure why. It seemed like there might be something with gravity pulling on them, but nobody quite understood. And finally, these scientists that you talked about uh, took a really hard look at it, did simulations, calculations, and they came up with the explanation, it probably is this giant planet. I, I think I read somewhere it orbits the sun every 10,000 to 20,000 years. Right. Uh, is that why no one has seen it to this no, point? No, that's not why. It's because it's so dim. It's, it's so far away that even though it's big, it's very, very dim and it'd be very tough to spot with the telescope. I'm also fascinated at the idea that this planet could be so far out there and still our sun be the mass that is keeping it in the gravitational pull of our solar system. Right, right, yeah, but no, that's, it's true. That's incredible. And so there was a thought at one point from scientists that when they thought that there was something beyond Pluto, that it might have been all the massive objects floating in the, in the Kyber belt, but it's not. Right. So, so the, all those objects are out there and they have a lot of mass. And originally the scientists said, look, a planet is such a crazy idea. Maybe <laughs> it's the Kuiper belt itself that's pulling it on, on itself and making these, these orbits look funny. Well, and, and when we talk about the, the mass of this planet X, this ninth planet being 10 times that of Earth, for those who are not scientists, what does that really mean, the mass of a planet versus Earth's mass? Well, if you could put it on a scale, how much it would weigh. Yeah. I mean, that's really it. And, and so it's bigger, it's bulkier, it's, it's got more heft, it's got more gravity. It's this huge elephant in the living room, except we didn't know it was there. You mentioned that scientists haven't seen it yet because of how far away it is and yeah. how dim it is. Is there a way for them to get visual evidence? Yes, so, so the biggest telescopes in the world can theoretically see this thing if they're looking in exactly the right place. And with the publication of this new paper today, uh, they are now going to start to look in earnest. How much further out there is this planet X than the rest of the planets in the solar system? I mean, it's, it's well, it's, so so Pluto we think of as the really out at the very edge, mm -hmm. the, the very farthest thing that you could call a planet, even though we don't anymore. <laughs> and um, I still I'm still supporting Pluto's I, no, right I, to, to be a planet. And, <laughs> um, but uh, this thing is five times further out wow. than Pluto. Fascinating. Fascinating. Is yeah. there any chance it's not a planet? It, we no, it. there's always. It, it, it's very foolish to say no chance because um, you know you just don't know what you don't know. But the odds are looking very, very good. 60 billion miles from the sun. Yep. Amazing stuff. Michael Lemonick, thank you so much. Fascinating stuff. Great, thanks.
the sometimes planet planet may be hiding a pretty huge secret. Well, two huge secrets, actually. Astronomers in Spain believe that hiding behind Pluto, obscured from our view, are two additional giant planets. Spanish scientists in Madrid discovered the potential for the two massive celestial bodies at the outer reach reaches of our solar system after studying strange patterns in the orbit of rocky objects around Pluto, including the newly discovered dwarf planet 2012 VP113. Scientists believe the first hidden wor world would be about 10 times the mass of Earth. They believe that this planet is moving in resonance with a bigger planet that is somewhere between Mars and Jupiter in size and would orbit 200 times the Earth's distance from the Sun. But can we ever conclusively confirm the existence of these two planets? Well, Scott Shepard at the Carnegie Institution for Science had this to say. As there are only a few of these extremely distant objects known, it's hard to say anything definitive about the number or location of any distant planets. However, in the near future, we should have more objects to work with to help us determine the structure of the outer solar system. So there you have it, time will tell. Now, here's the asteroid story. An asteroid the size of the Rose Bowl, more than a thousand feet across, feels its way toward the Earth right now. It'll come by first in 2029, and we'll see it up there. It'll be closer than our satellites, a thing the size of the Rose Bowl, Rose Bowl hurtling through the air. And then it comes again in 2036, and that's when it may get interesting. The debate over just how close it'll get is sparking some serious debate between Russian scientists and American scientists. Here's a satellite picture of the thing. This is from, well, with this, this and, you know, this tells you nothing. But you see it there? I don't know if that circly thing in the middle, maybe? Uh, this was from 2004. It doesn't look very intimidating here. Both sides seem to agree that in three decades, the asteroid will fly very close to Earth. But Russian scientists warn that our planet's gravity could change the asteroid's path and set it on a collision course. NASA scientists say there is a minuscule, little bitty chance of that happening. One in 250,000. Better than one in the lotto, and somebody will. When joining us now, Michio Kaku. He's a theoretical, theoretical physics, physics professor at City University of New York, CUNY. He's also the author of Physics of the Future, and a new book coming out in about a month, and we'll tell you about that in about a month. So, tw good to see you. 2029, it flies by underneath the satellites. That's right. Mark it on your calendar. Friday the 13th, oh April 2036. The well, that's big the one. second pass. On the second pass, right. The first pass, like you said, it comes right underneath our satellites. You can actually see it whizzing right overhead. Wow. And on the second pass, it might actually be a nation buster. It'll take out Germany. It'll take out France, England. If not England, not it. England. <laughs> or the, the entire northeast of the United States. Careful. It'll hit with the force of 100,000 Hiroshima bombs. Really? If It'll, it hits? If it hits, right. It's a catastrophe beyond human comprehension. And the head of the Russian Space Agency has said that the Russian scientists should think of some ways of deflecting it or, or handling this deflecting menace it. in what a, 2036. What a, what, I mean, what, what are we going to do? Shoot it with a laser? Well, everyone thinks we'll send Bruce Willis out oh, there Bruce with the Willis space shuttle. But the space shuttle can't even reach outer space. We're phasing it out, and the space shuttle only spins wheels around the planet Earth. It cannot even go to deep space. We need a new booster rocket to take us out there. Maybe China will build us one. Maybe, and then we have to nudge it out of the way. The farther it is, the easier it is to push it out with rockets so it'll, it'll miss the planet Earth.